Hi, I'm Bob with the Windsor Carter Group. Thanks for joining us today as we discuss the Cadet 7, the Admiral 8, and of course the Clipper 12. Now the nice thing about these three pieces of equipment is literally if you know one, you pretty much know them all. Now looking at the front of the machine, whether it be the Cadet 7, the Admiral 8, or the Clipper 12, you'll see the accessory ports. First one's going to be for the vacuum, the second one's going to be for the solution itself. Now I'd also like to point out, when it comes to the vac shoe itself, it's important to make sure you're choosing the unit where the vac shoe and the brush operate independently. Now the reason why is because there's not an even floor anywhere. So if we have a rigid vac shoe, you'll probably catch the highs, but you're going to miss the lows, which will lead to streaking down the road because of inconsistent dry times. Easiest way to figure that out, simply grab the vac shoe, pull up on one side, see if it's spring loaded. Try that before you actually buy an extractor, because again, if the vac shoe and the brush don't operate independently, you're not going to get the results that you're hoping to achieve. Let's go and take a look at the brush at this point. To remove the brush, whether it be the Cadet 7, the Admiral 8, or the Clipper 12, remember, if you know one, you know them all. What you're going to do is simply reach inside, grab a hold of the brush itself, and pull down from the bearing side. That will allow you to reduce the brush, to be able to clean it, and actually clean the brush housing as well. Let's go ahead and take a look how easy it is to remove the jets on this machine. To remove the solution jets on these three pieces of equipment, it's very, very simple. They're all quarter turn release jets. Now what that means, you simply take the jet, push up on it slightly, take it a quarter turn, and the jet will come right out for you. Now for maintenance tips on this, don't be using drill bits, paper clips, toothpicks, or any sharp objects that can distort the jet. Because what that's going to lead to is streaking in the carpet and obviously undesirable results. It's very, very simple to clean them. Let them sit in a cup of hot water overnight and that will typically take care of it. Worst case scenario, you may have to let them sit in a cup of vinegar. It's a very mild acid and that will actually break down any residue that's left in the jets as well. Most important thing, don't lose them because you're going to need them next time around. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the brush height adjustment. Now the important thing to remember is how to properly adjust your brush height. Now there's a lot of confusion around this. So what we recommend is simply turn your brush switch on. Lower it notch by notch until you physically hear it hit your carpet. Now a lot of people will stop there while some other people will actually take it one notch further and that's fine. The important thing to remember is that the tip of the bristle cleans everything while the side of the bristle cleans nothing at all. So make sure your brush height is adjusted accordingly to get the desired cleaning results. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how you access the solution tanks on the Cadet 7, the Admiral 8, and the Clipper 12. Now you probably have already guessed it. Solution capacity on the Cadet 7, you guessed it, 7 gallons. Solution capacity on the Admiral 8, you guessed it again, 8 gallons. Solution capacity on the Clipper 12, 12 gallons. Again, very, very simple. To access the solution tanks on the Cadet 7, Admiral 8, and Clipper 12 are very, very simple. What you're going to do is simply remove the recovery tank and that will give you access to the solution tank to be able to fill it. Now one thing we actually give you on the Admiral 8 and the Clipper 12 is a nice fill hose. So an important note to remember, when you're using the fill hose, don't just simply attach it to a faucet and walk away because you could possibly make a huge mess. So when you're done with it, go ahead and put it back inside the solution tank, replace your recovery lid, and you're good to go. Now let's go ahead and talk about the recovery tank itself. Whether we're talking the Cadet 7, the Admiral 8, or the Clipper 12, it's important to remember how to properly put the lid on top of the actual recovery tank. It's very, very simple. What you're going to do is line up the tab that's on the lid with the notch that's on the tank and it goes on properly for you every time. The other thing I want to point out, when you're in the operator's position, when you're utilizing this machine, we should always see water being pulled through the right side of the machine itself. Now inside the recovery tank we have two different ports. We have a right port and we have a left port. Now like we've already discussed, the right port in normal extraction mode we should always see water come through the right port and that's going to dump right inside the recovery tank. Now in the left port we actually have a float shutoff device. It's designed obviously if the water level gets too high, your foam level gets too high, it's designed to shut the float to the vac motor off. Thus if we ever see water come through that left port, shut your vac motor down, clear any obstructions that might be happening and go ahead and resume operation. Now to drain the recovery tanks is very, very simple. Locate the recovery drain hose that's in the back of the machine, open the yellow cap and it allows you to drain 100% of the recovery water. Now from there, let's go ahead and work our way up and let's look at the control panel itself. Starting with the control panel on the Cadet 7, you'll see if we have a few different things going on back here. Obviously we have a brush, solution and vacuum on and off switch with the breakers as well. 
but we also have a momentary switch on the solution. So that way, if I just push the trigger up, it'll spray the solution. As soon as I let go, the solution stops, which is also a nice thing in case I get interrupted. The other thing you're going to notice on the handle on the Cadet 7 is actually fixed to the tank itself, which makes it very durable, especially when you have to transport this machine from job site to job site. Now when I jump over to the Admiral Light, we still have the same things going on, but just slightly different configuration. We still have the breakers, we have the brush, solution, and vacuum on off switches here, but we also have the momentary switch on here as well. So basically what that means is if I hit one of the three yellow triggers, the solution will spray. If I let go of the trigger, again the solution will stop in case I get interrupted. Now, the handle is slightly different as well. In the Admiral 8, we can actually adjust the handle to accommodate different operator heights. Now, if I take you over to the Clipper 12, it's the same deal as the Admiral 8, meaning we have the breakers here, we have the on-off switches for the brush, vacuum, and solution, and again, momentary as well, so you know if I hit one of the three triggers, the solution will spray. If I let go of them, the solution stops. Now, one of the nice features of the Clipper 12 is the fact I can take the handle and flip it to the other side. Now the reason why that's so nice, if I'm doing long corridors or large areas, I can flip the handle and now I can actually walk forwards versus walking backwards the whole time. Now one thing we would all agree, if I'm walking forwards it's definitely a lot safer and I typically achieve better cleaning results. But speaking of cleaning results, I can give you all the cool stuff in the world, but if you don't know how to properly use them, you're not going to get the results you're looking for. So let's go ahead and take a look at the process and procedures behind carpet extraction. So just like we talked about before, I can give you all the cool toys in the world, but if you don't have the right process and procedure to back that up, you're probably not going to get the desired cleaning results. So we recommend a four-step process when it comes to cleaning commercial carpets. First thing we need to do is actually use a good upright vacuum as brush agitation down below. It's important to remember that 79-80% of all the soil that's in our carpet is actually dry soil and needs to be removed by a dry method, so always start by vacuuming thoroughly. Second step is to apply our pre-spray. Now yes, there's a lot of folks out there are using a one gallon or even a two gallon pop-up pre-sprayer, which actually works okay. But it doesn't work as well as this machine, but let me tell you why. This machine comes standard with a 50 PSI pump. It has a fixed jet that's angled perfectly every time. Underneath we have counter-rotating brushes. Now what the counter-rotating brushes are designed to do is actually lift that nap a little bit so we can get all this stuff down here you normally can't get and get it to the top and get it out. And trust me, that will keep your carpets fresher a lot longer. Now if we've done the first two things correctly, the only thing this machine is really doing is just rinsing all that soap and stuff back out of the carpet. Now it's important to remember, don't use just water. Hard water removes about 15% of all the stuff we put in, soft water about 30%, but extraction rinse about 90 plus. So again, use your extraction rinse and it'll turn out really well for you. The last thing that we're going to do is actually dry the carpet. The quicker we can dry it, it eliminates mold, mildew, and things of that nature. Also streaking and, by the way, spots from coming back. We can actually take with the wicking effect out of the equation just by using a blower. So until next time, when you think of the Windsor Cartridge Group, think of Bob. Better operating budgets.